ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. Welcome into the Friday, April 22nd edition, The Drive with ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You know, we were expecting to have a show today. Thought we'd be sitting back right now listening to maybe uh, maybe doing a little seven-inning stretch with the Pirates taking on the Cubs. No, instead, uh, inclement weather pushed that back. So we're going on the air with the Cubs and the Pirates later on this evening here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So we're here today, of course, That doesn't mean we're unprepared. We have got you covered. We'll open the phone lines up for you, 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-8255. And, of course, our text line, 304-396-8255. That's 304-396-TALK. Tomorrow's the big day. Are you excited? You get to go to the spring game to see the herd play the herd. Coach Huff's excited because the herd's going to win. I'm a little, I'm not as excited. I'm I'm a little pessimistic here because, you know, the Herd's going to lose tomorrow. Herd's going to win. Coach Huff, he's excited because the Herd's going to win. Let's just go ahead and put it out there right now. The Herd's going to win tomorrow. But, yeah, the Herd's going to lose tomorrow as well. Winner gets steak, loser gets hot dogs. Coach Huff probably is getting both. Because he's not actually the coach. Of, yeah, he's not. He's he's the coach of both. So he'll eat hot dogs and steak. So it's a win-win for him. So we got a lot to get into today. Of course, uh, we're going to hear from Coach Huff some things that uh, he said, talking a little bit about what's going to happen next after the spring game. So we'll kind of get an idea of what he is uh, looking to do with his time. You know, he's going to hit the road. He's also going to be going on coaches' tours. That means uh, for people who are. Um, Booster clubs across the the, uh, the landscape here. You know, opportunity to go see coaches. You know the, the coaches caravan, you know, where you get to see some maybe a couple of players. You get to see some coaches coming out. I'm sure Christian Spears will be on a lot of those uh, tour destinations. So that's all coming up soon, and you know, he's going to be doing a lot of that. And of course, recruiting. Got to recruit, got to hit the transfer portal. You know, none of that stops. It, it's actually, it feels like it's a 24-7 job, and except for the, the time where the, the dead period. And honestly, is it a dead period or is where you're doing research? Yeah, yeah, you can't go contact players, but at the same time, you're probably still doing a lot of research. So we'll hear from Coach Huff a little bit later on, and uh, we're going to update you on what's happening. Uh, several things are going on today. Baseball's in action tonight, 7 o'clock against uh, – I'm sorry, actually, is it uh, – I think it's softball's at 7, baseball's at 6. Either way, both teams are at Western Kentucky. So the Hilltoppers and the Herd, softball and baseball. But tomorrow's the spring game. And that means the spring game, the spring fountain ceremony, and that's taking place uh, 11 a.m. A little different – atmosphere than it is for the turning of the fountain off turning that off is more somber this is a little bit more upbeat it's spring you're turning the fountain back on so it's meant to be a little bit more uplifting a little bit more positive not as somber you know probably won't see that big of a crowd there for i mean you'll see people over there it's you know it's not going to have you know lots of students probably you know, going between classes, stopping for a few minutes, you know, so it's not going to have that instant traffic built in as compared to when the the, sound, the fountain's turned off. But that's happening tomorrow, and that's happening at 11. And, of course, uh, tailgating's at 10 a.m. So tailgating practice, as Coach Huff talked about it, you know, a chance for you to, to fire up the grill, figure out what you need to do, learn how to, to maybe operate that new grill you bought. So tailgating starts tomorrow, and then, of course, they're going to do the Jones Zone tomorrow. And inflatables, there's going to be lots of uh, festivities around the stadium. Opportunity for you to go check out the renderings of what the new turf looks like. For those of you that are a little bit more analog than digital, get a chance to see what those, what have we been talking about? This black end zone, this Kelly Green end zone, that gray end zone. Uh, Just remember, the gray end zone is terrible. Do not choose the gray end zone. If you if you say you like the gray end zone, we are not the same. 
We are not the same. That end zone was terrible. I still I still lean towards the Kelly Green, a little bit more traditionalist for me. I'm sure it's going to ultimately be the black end zone that wins out. I mean, let's let's not kid ourselves here. It's going to be the black end zone. We know. Thanks for letting me have the illusion of choice here. I appreciate that. But it's going to be the black end zone. Write it down right now that I said that. What time is it? It is, it is 5.11 p.m. on Friday, April 22nd. Write that down. It's going to be the black one. Anything else, I'll be a little shocked. I still want the Kelly Green one, but we'll take the black one. So we're going to open up the text line for you here, give you an opportunity to, to get your thoughts in. Uh, there's a couple things we got to get into. Uh, we're going to hear from Coach Huff. Obviously, want to talk about what he's uh, doing. He had some uh, interesting things. You know, we not only did we talk football with him, we talked a little bit about the things that are surrounding football, not the game itself, not the players themselves, but we talked a little bit more about some of the other issues that are going on in the college landscape today. And we'll talk about that. We'll update you on what's happening across the board here. Also, when we continue, I want to talk about this. Chad Pennington. Now, yesterday we got the budget. We saw the budget. Board of Governors and putting it all together. Chad Pennington made a request that the uh, Board of Governors honored. It's no longer going to be the Chad Pennington Hall of Fame. It's going to be just, you know, the Marshall Athletics Hall of Fame. Chad's name's no longer going to be attached to it. So we'll talk about that decision when we continue. Your phone calls and texts as well. I'm your host, Paul Swan. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. This is the Friday, April 22nd edition of your drive. Paul Swan, your host, that's me. Thanks for tuning in. You can be a part of the program using our White Claw phone line at 877-420-TALK. That's 877-420-8255 with our text line 304 304- 396-8255. That's 304-396-8255. So yesterday, we got the word from the Marshall Board of Governors meeting. The budget was approved, so that was a big issue. Approving the 2022-2023 budget. Tuition and regular flat fees for undergraduate students. So that's good. And part of what happened at the the meeting, first of all, Chad Pennington, who is part of the Board of Governors, made a request, and the board agreed. He requested that the board change the name of the university's Chad Pennington Athletic Hall of Fame to the Marshall University Athletic Hall of Fame. Pennington said yesterday in the meeting he made that request because he wants attention to focus on everyone who has been inducted into the Hall of Fame since founding in 1984. And he said, while putting my name on the Hall of Fame was a well-intended gesture from the university, I feel like eight years later with a new era in martial athletics and the football program, this is the right time to put the attention where it really belongs. So he has said, hey, look, Take my name off of it. Focus more on the people inside the Hall of Fame than my name being in front of the Hall of Fame. Of course, you know, Chad's made donations to the university. Chad has uh, continued to be a servant of the university, working on the Board of Governors. So that's an interesting decision. He's got other opportunities. We'll find ways, I'm sure, to honor him you know, when it's all said and done here in another, you know, at the end, end, at the end of his life, you know, we'll still be honoring him. So it's not as if he's going to be forgotten here. There's no worry there. So Hall of Fame is now back to the Hall of Fame. And I agree with that 100%. I like Chad. But at the same time, I don't think that that was the right 
place for that. I mean, it was a great gesture. I mean, it was a meaningful gesture. Hey, Chad, you know, this is the Chad Pennington Hall of Fame. It, it should always just be the Marshall Athletics Hall of Fame. I mean, there shouldn't be a, a, a name attached to that. Now, if you want to give out a Chad Pennington Award, something with Chad's name on it, have something that's really meaningful, I mean, that's one thing. But to name the Hall of Fame, I mean, that's probably the one structure, the one thing that I would not have a name on. I mean, you need donors, you need people participating, you need contributions and gifts. You know, you need all of that. Thankfully, we're not gone to the point where we're having coaches sponsor. You, you know, the, the sponsorship coaches. You now, where we have to have a presenting sponsor for the coach. Thankfully, we're not there yet because if that's the case, I'm going down the hallway and I'm going to buy sponsorship of Coach Huff. It's going to cost me a pretty penny, but I'm going to, you know, it's going to be the drive with Paul Swan presents Marshall football coach Charles Huff. And you have to say that every time. That's going to, when he comes out for a press conference, hey, I want to welcome to the program now the drive with Paul Swan coach. Or just, no, you know what? Just to shorten it. Paul Swan presents Charles Huff. I got to work on that. We're, we're working on that delivery here. But we haven't gone down that route, thank goodness, just yet. Sponsoring the coaching position. Um, Charles Huff, the head coach, uh, the the Paul, yeah, Paul Swan head coach. Yes, how, see, it's it's terrible marketing. Because I'm never going to use that. If if Marshall plays a, a team and the coaching position is sponsored, I am not going to use that. Never. I'm never going to refer to that coach with that sponsor. I'm not going to do it. I vaguely do it now with the bowl games. And that's the re- reason why the bowl games got rid of most of the titles and it's now the sponsorship. Because you know, when you say Cotton Bowl, you're not saying the sponsor. It's, it's, it's the Cotton Bowl. It's the Orange Bowl. It's the Rose Bowl. The Sugar Bowl. We're not saying that the sponsor. So now you have to say, okay, Marshall's playing in, you know, the Tax Slayer Bowl. You have to say that because that's the name of the bowl. That's an, yeah, the sponsors got got hip to that. So it's a good decision by Chad's point. Now, some people yesterday, again, it's all anecdotal here, but I started to feel a few people were like, hey, look, let's get this guy a statue. Chad Pennington needs a statue. So we're going to see like a Monument Park maybe in the future, a Monument Park with some of the all-time greats at Marshall University. I know we've joked about this before. John Elmore needs a statue because of what John's contributions were to Marshall University and getting into the NCAA tournament and his time here. We've joked about that, but were we serious? I think we kind of were that somewhere, some time in the future, we need to have some sort of – marker of some sorts to to commemorate John Elmore as one of the all-time greats at Marshall University. So we've got the Hal Greer statue up. That was something Dan really wanted to see happen. So we got that. I'm sure you know you need to add to some of the all-time greats. Remember when Greg White put the uh, Henderson Center Hall of Famers up with those portraits? I think we could do that a little bit better and the uh, overall design of things, you, know, you can have a way to do all of that. Uh, but you know, he was on the right path as far as, okay, here are some of the legends of, of Marshall University. So now do you need a, a monument park? How many statues can we put up, and who gets the statue? Chad Pennington. Byron Lefwich. Randy Moss. Those right there. There's the first three. The rest is on you. I gave you my three. That's the first three. This isn't the Mount Rushmore of Marshall Athletics. No, this is a strictly football. If you want to find another way to honor Chad Pennington, we'll put up a statue of him. Have have a few statues outside of Jones C. Edwards Stadium. All right, you gotta have a statue of Chad. Then you got to have a statue of Randy. Then you got to have a statue of Byron. Who gets the next one? I'm leaving that one to you. 
You can text your response in. The text line is 304-396-8255. 304-396 talk. So that's your that's your option there. Who gets the who gets the statue? Could it be some of the guys that are showing up? You got bowling tonight. You got bowling. And some of the names that are going to be showing up. Of course, Doug Chapman, Mike Bartram, Lee Smith, Max Yates, Doug Ligurski, Aaron Ferguson, Steve Shulo, Cody Slate, Ralph Street, Danny Derricott's coming, BJ Cohen, Orlando Hatchett, Shannon Morrison, Nate McPeak, Will King, my guy Dave Walsh, Vinny Curry. There's your fourth statue, maybe. Is, is Vinny your fourth? You could have Chad, Randy, Byron, Vinny, and I'll throw one more name out there. Michael Payton. I know we're getting quarterback heavy here. We are a little quarterback heavy. But Michael Payton needs to be in all conversations. After all, he won the 1AA equivalent of the Heisman, the Walter Payton Award. So Michael Payton, Byron Lefwich, Chad Pennington, Randy Moss. Do you throw Vinny in there? He's in town, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. Vinny gets a statue. But how would you go about this? Instead of naming Hall of Fames after athletes, you, do you do you need to have a ring of honor, but that might get filled up quickly because how many people that should be the all if you do a ring of honor, that should be the ultimate. I mean, you can get into the Marshall Hall of Fame. I mean, and that right now that's the ultimate. But if you want to for football, if you want to you want to do one more, take it one step higher, football, have a ring of honor. Because maybe we can't afford the statues. And you want to have more guys. You want to have more people. Again, this is football. Then who gets in the ring of honor? Again, Chad, Randy, Vinny, Byron. Throw Michael Payton in there. I'll make I'll make that argument all 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 the time. Michael Payton. Would you put Rakeem in that conversation? Does he Hall of Fame, yes. Ring of Honor, maybe? What's the standard? That's the thing. What's the standard here? What's going to be the... Because we don't want to just put everybody in it. I mean, what's the point of it then? Don't put just... Yeah, you got to be... You got to be best of the best. You got to be... I mean, it's got to be super monumental. Because there are a lot of great players that have come and gone, and yeah, and they'll earn their spot in the Hall of Fame, as they should. I mean, the Hall of Fame is designed to be where you honor all the past greats. But then you take it a little step higher with the Ring of Honor. That's where you start separating a little bit. I mean, that's got to be a pretty elite club. I mean, the Hall of Fame is a pretty big deal. And that's not that's not diminishing anyone's accomplishment or being in the Hall of Fame. But at the same time, are you putting really good athletes, really good athletes on the ring of honor? Or are you just putting the, the best of the best? You're putting the all-time greats, the greats of the greats. But then, does that create a little animosity here? Well, what do you mean? I'm not. I'm not on the Ring of Honor. I mean, it's one thing if you're like a professional football team and you don't. I mean, I mean, do you have a Hall of Fame and a Ring of Honor? It sort of is one of the same. But if you already have a Hall of Fame and you want to do something for football, but if you got seventy or eighty people in the Ring of Honor in a short period, I see. I don't know what's going to be. You know, how how will you make that special? How do you make that special? 
same thing with basketball. I mean, Jansen Williams was a heck of a player, but do you put him in like a? Uh, I mean, do you put his? You put him in the rafters of the Henderson Center? No, you probably don't. Great player, great guy, but no, he's not an all-time great up there. I mean, John Elmore gets up there. John Elmore, Ott's going to be in the uh, in the TBT Hall of Fame right there. So he's taking care. I'm not worried about him. Ott's going to be in the TBT Hall of Fame. He's going to be in the Social Media Hall of Fame somewhere. He's taken care of there. But you put John up there. I mean, do you put a guy like C.J. Burks up there? Great player. Fantastic player. But do you put him up there ultimately? I don't know. Tavion Kinsey, do you put him up there? I mean, he's looking at some of the current guys. I mean, he, does he go up there? That's a that's a good question. Where we're trying to figure out how do you how, what is there is there a way to honor a lot of people and not slight anyone? Different honors for different people. I mean, so do you go with? Okay, we're, we're taking Chad's name off this building here. He appreciated the honor, but he wanted to focus on all the athletes. Okay, and that's great. But we can do something different here. You know, maybe you have something to to denote his significance with a statue. Have Yeah, have a statue of somebody. I mean, look at what you see at professional baseball teams. You go to certain teams and they have you know statues of the all-time greats. So not everybody gets a statue. Not to say that means you, you weren't an important part, but you're not putting you're not putting a statue of Kurt Rambis out there. Magic Johnson, yes. Kurt Rambis, no. Couldn't do it without Kurt Rambis. You're putting Magic Johnson. You're putting Kareem Abdul Jabbar up yeah, out there. You're putting that Kobe. You're doing that with Kobe. LeBron? No, he doesn't get a Lakers statue. Yeah, you won one championship, but you don't get a Lakers statue. Kobe gets a statue. You don't. Miami Heat. Uh, Okay, now I'm just getting ridiculous. That's not happening there. All right. The phone line is open, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The talk line is 304-396-8255. So send your text in to 304-396-TALK. We're going to hear from Coach Huff when we continue with this edition of The Drive. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. We're opening up the text line for you on this beautiful Friday afternoon. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And you can text by using 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. Tomorrow's spring game. 3 o'clock, indoor, and of course you got the Jones Zone happening at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. Going to have the game on the big screen, so if you can't get into the indoor, you don't want to go into the indoor, You'd rather hang out in the um, beautiful weather, hang out the Jones Zone, do the tailgating, there's going to be an option there for you to be able to follow along and be a part of the festivities going on. And then after all of that, what happens next? Well, we count up with Coach Huff getting ready for the game itself and then, of course, everything that's happening afterwards. And recruiting is going to be one of the big things that will be happening for Coach. They're going to get on the road, but also between the winners and losers, you know what's going to happen. Winners get steak, losers get hot dogs, and then there's going to be a lot of recruiting happening. Yeah, so um, for us on Sunday, we'll have our annual steak and uh, hot dogs dinner. The winners of the spring game will eat steak. And the losers will eat hot dogs. Um, and we'll have that with, with our team to create a little competition in the spring game. Um, and then Monday, we'll do our, our kind of end of spring review and kind of close out, you know, the spring season, um, you know, cut ups and making sure that everything, any ideas that we had, any issues that showed up, um, we we're able to address. And then all our coaches will hit the road recruiting for for the next month, you know. So Tuesday morning, our guys will be on the road all across the country recruiting, and they'll recruit all the way through the month of May. Um, Obviously, we're still very actively recruiting, you know, some of the transfer portal options that are out there. Um, So it'll be, you know, coaches will be able to see their families, kiss their families, and they'll be on the road for a month. On the road all over doing the recruiting. So that's what's going to be happening 
for the Thundering Herd after this thing. You're going to do the year in review. You're going to do the hot dogs or steak. I mean, come on, really, Coach? I like steak and I like hot dogs. It just depends on what day it is. I mean, do I want, a, I want a really well grilled steak here? Do I want something really nice? Or, you know, do I want, do I want hot dogs? Now, he didn't even really tell me what's, you know, am I going to get sauce? For those of you who call it chili, again, we're not the same. It's sauce, not chili. Ketchup, mustard. I mean, am I getting the basics? Am I getting coleslaw on my, on my hot dog? What am I getting here? Am I getting fries with that as well? I need to know. These are the important things to know. You know, what's the presentation like here at the hot dog? Because I'm feeling like maybe nobody's a loser here when it comes to the hot dogs or the steak. What kind of sides are we getting as well? I mean, these are some of the questions that we should have asked, but we didn't because, well, what were we thinking here? Uh, So a lot of fun going to be had, I'm sure, over the next few weeks. You know, you're getting back on the road, you know, getting an opportunity to connect with uh, future potential you know, herd players. Then you got the opportunity to hit the road and do a little bit of, um, I want to say networking, get to go on you know, trips to meet with alumni, fans, donors, you know, big events like that, sort of the lifeblood of a program. Of course, you get the fan base, especially the fan base with money, excited about your program, you know, get them energized, you know, because donors are a key part of why Marshall's able to do what it can. And for Coach Huff, he's looking forward to it as well because all of that I just mentioned, and he gets to hang out with a lot of the coaches, not just, uh, you know, usually hanging out with your, your your staff, but you get to hang out with Ari Agnes. You get to hang out with uh, Tony Kemper. You get to hang out with Megan smith Lyon. You get to hang out with some of those coaches, Chris Grassy, and he talked about, you know, the opportunity. That'll be an opportunity where I'll get to get with some of the other coaches and do some of the coaching tours and get around to some of our local community and get to speak at some of these um, donor events, um, spend some other time with some of the other coaches on the tour. I really enjoy it because you get a chance to talk to some of the other coaches and figure out, you know, some of the things they're dealing with. Um, Big shout out to Coach Smith on Win 500 and what she's doing with the softball program and her staff has been phenomenal. And I want to pick her brain, you know, what, what are some of the things that, you know, came up, we're we're all dealing with, you know, college age kids, right? So what are some of the things that came up that um, you guys were able to, you know, kind of manage with, get with coach Dan Tony and get with coach Kemper and the whole staff coach Grassy and just kind of discuss, you know, where we are as an athletic department and how we all can help each other and pick their brains for things that I can get better at as well. So the learning never stops. That's always uh, the best attitude. The learning never stops. Uh, the learning for me never stops. The learning for you never stops. And for Coach Huff, I mean, you get to 500 wins, you're doing something right. I talked to Coach Megan Smith Lyon. She's like, I mean, she was humble about it, but I'm like, Coach, it's so it's cool because you just didn't walk into that. You just didn't wake up one day and it's like, hey, I'm going to coach and be. A, a 500 win coach. You got to work at that. You just don't. You don't get lucky. You don't luck into that. So you know, there's a lot to be learned from the exchange of ideas between successful coaches. And of course, you know, one other thing that coach has been doing a pretty good job of navigating because we're still learning is the transfer portal. And he had a pretty solid take on. And he he's not shy about his take as well. He's a, he has a pretty solid take on on the transfer portal. There's not exactly this doom and gloom attitude going on with Marshall University when it comes to the transfer portal. Yeah, I think, you know, and everyone is up in arms about the transfer portal. Either you adapt or you die. I mean, so it's a transfer portal. It's here. So we're going to be able to use it to to our strengths. And what does that mean? It's going to give us the ability to fill some of those gaps in our roster. Right. Um, You know, I don't believe in forcing a freshman to play. No fan wants to hear about how young of a team we have and how five years from now we'll be really, really good. Um, Everyone wants, you know, success now, you know, so this gives us an opportunity to upgrade our roster, um, you know, in spots where we see weaknesses. Um, It's not free agency, so I can't just go out and dial up a, you know, 6'5", 325 pound tackle that played at a, you know, ACC school with four years left. That'd be great. Boom, there he is. That's not how it works. No, that's not how it works. 
And he has got a philosophy as well. He's not just going into this blind like, okay, yeah, look at all these things I can go get. He's got a philosophy about how you attack the transfer portal. And I think you've heard it before, but he reiterated it again. You got to have a relationship. You have to have some form of relationship. Doesn't matter if it's a direct relationship or an indirect relationship. Somebody's got to have a connection. You can't, I mean, I'm sure there will be exceptions, but if you don't know about a guy in that transfer portal, you better know about him. If Marshall's going to look at him, there better be a connection. And so he talks a little bit more about that philosophy. Our philosophy is uh, we don't recruit anyone out of the transfer portal that someone in our building doesn't have some sort of a relationship with. Um, I think some of the guys we've had success with here in the past, you know, the Corey McCoys, Andre Sam is here, um, had relationships with Coach Guidry. Um, you, you don't want to bring um, different cultures and different attitudes into your program. You want to know that the kids fit Marshall and what we do, not only from an athletic standpoint, but from a character standpoint. So there's no person that we recruit. And that doesn't mean that we have only recruit guys that played for our coaches, but somebody recruited them along the way, or, you know, his high school coach, or, you know, his parents, um, that way it allows us to be able to know what we're getting as far as the holistic student athlete. Um, you know, you can look at the portal and, oh, there's this 6'6", you know, 280 D lineman. Yeah, well, you don't know, is he hard worker? You know, does he, um, you know, play as a good teammate? You know, does he practice the right way? Does he make good decisions off the field? Um, so it's not the free agency pool where you can just dial up the guy you need. You got to be able to um, investigate, manage, and research it. Um, and we've been able to um, use it to our benefit moving forward. And what is that benefit exactly? Because now you've got to manage the transfer portal. You're still recruiting. You're going out. You're recruiting players that you hope work out, and they're going to be four-year starters for you, or at least they're going to be you know, full-term players that you can start from the beginning with and get to the very end with them, and they've turned out to be a great player for you. You've got all of that. And you heard what he talked about. You heard him mention it, that fans don't want to hear about we're young. Fans don't want to hear, hey, we got a young team. The reason why we're not winning is because we got a young team. Well, he just said he knows. You don't want to hear him say that. So he's trying to balance the portal, the development of players, and he talked a little bit about that, filling the gaps while developing those young players. You know, you're filling gaps in your, in your roster. And um, these freshmen that are coming in, I'd love to say they were all game ready and going to be ready to play, but the reality of it is they're freshmen, right? They deserve the right to develop. Um, but also this fan base and this community and this university deserves the right to win now. Um, so I know that's what everybody wants to do. So we've got to be able to, to kind of balance that act, right? You know, balance where we are from a roster depth perspective and what helps um, improve our team. And also where, you know, we're, we're not putting ourselves in a situation where we are just solely relying on the transfer port. Not going to be all freshmen. Not going to be all transfer portal players. Going to be a mix there. But you heard him. He's speaking directly to you. When he said, I know our fans, he's talking to you. Don't want to hear about our team being young. And you want to win now. Not, oh, we're going to be good in three or four years. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. No one wants to hear that. I have never heard a fan go, you know, hey, I'm great with this losing now. We're going to be great in a few years. I get it. I get it completely. You, you don't want to rebuild. You want to always be in reload mode. Cliche as it sounds, you want to be in reload mode. How do you reload? Well, you got to have something in the chamber first, and then you got to go get some more. You know, for a while, Marshall didn't have anything in the chamber. So Marshall had to, um, first of all, Marshall didn't have a chamber, so he had to go get a chamber. Then yeah, you had to build that back. So he knows you don't want to wait. You, you want to have success. You want to see progress. You want to see success. I mean, let's be honest. 
you know, ultimately every year, if you're a herd fan, you're expecting a conference championship. Seven and five won't cut it here in a couple of years. You want a conference championship. You want to see Marshall win the Sun Belt Conference Championship every year. If if Marshall doesn't win the Sun Belt Conference Championship every year, that's a disappointing season. You know I'm not speaking anything that's not true. You understand that you can't win every year, but it's sort of that mentality. Marshall should be winning every year. And so Coach knows, hey, you don't want to hear that as a fan base. You don't want to hear me talking about, okay, well, you know, I got all these young guys. They're going to be good in a couple of years, but, you know, we got to go through this growing plane. And when you have that transfer portal, it's like basketball. You know, when basketball season rolls around again, if Marshall isn't instantly better, it's going to be a long year. Not only for, for Dan and the win loss record, the fans are going to be grumbling a lot more because you want an improvement. The Sun Belt is not Conference USA when it comes to basketball. Football, it's much better. Basketball, got some work to do. Marshall should be able to come in and compete right away. But at the same time, if Marshall's not winning right away, Marshall's not winning and not competing, it's going to be a long season. And you know it, and you're going to point to, well, Dan didn't do this or Dan didn't do that or why did Dan do this? Yeah, that'll start sooner than later. It hasn't stopped. Coach Huff, we had a chance to catch up with him um, ahead of the spring game and a couple more things he talked about. Name, image, and likeness. That's not going away. The model is still being developed, how that's going to work. Some schools are you know, paying students to a degree. Some groups have formed to help students. Alumni have got together to form coalitions. University is is an education mode. I mean, Marshall's not going out and brokering deals. Not calling, you know, Coach Huff's not calling up the car dealership and saying, "Hey, I need another, I need another car." That's not how that works. But a lot of education going on, and Coach Huff talked about name, image, and likeness, as that came up recently as uh, the university did host a, an event to discuss that with uh, several you know, leaders in the community. Here's what Coach Huff you know, says when it comes to name, image, and likeness. Yeah, well, what we're trying to do is we're, we're just trying to create opportunities for our student athletes to be able to create value from themselves from their name, image, and likeness. Um, and just in talking to them about how to engage this community, talking to them about their brand, talking to them about representing themselves and Marshall the right way. Um, Also explaining to them that good players have a brand. Um, If you don't play, they probably don't know who you are. Um, But it's an opportunity for us to be able to connect our community and our our, our student athletes um, so that they can, you know, use their name, image, and likeness, you know, to create value for themselves. We're not really into setting up, hey, go see this guy or go call this guy. But what we are into is educating them about branding, educating them about creating value um, through their, um, their play, obviously, through their, you know, commitment to doing things the right way, through their education, through their academics. Um, it's a landscape that it's a little bit new to, to our fan base just because of, you know, it's new to college football. Um, but this is where we're going in college football. Um, I think it's great for the student athletes to be able to create value for themselves. Um, it's not something that's new. It's just something that's kind of branded new. Um, people have always been able to get jobs in college, right? So student athletes have always been able to work. This is just a new model of how they can work. Um, And I think for us, educating our players on how to use this model, as well as educating our community on how to use this model is going to be good for the entire student athlete group moving forward. We're going to wrap it up when we continue on the Friday edition of The Drive. I'm your host, Paul Swan. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930. 
brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank, the local bank that's here for every step of your life's journey. Member FDIC. One score update from the Conference USA Tennis Tournament. The women fall to Charlotte today 4-1. And so Charlotte takes the last spot in the semifinals. So congratulations to John Mercer and his team for a, um, I thought it was a solid season from them. I'm sure he would have um, some things to say about that, but I thought it was a solid season for him. It was a high-caliber schedule, so uh, hopefully next year will be better in the Sun Belt. Uh, today is the final day for our other intern, Jaden Taylor. However, we're not going to give him the pomp and circumstance uh, because he's still uh, not graduated yet, so he's going to be around a little bit more. So uh, closer to graduation time for him. We'll make a bigger fuss over you, Jaden, because we got to get you out the door first. I mean, you'll still be around. You just won't be here in this capacity, but you know, you'll still be around. We'll see you uh, at Marshall events uh, over at the student station, WMUL. So uh, Jaden's not leaving. We're not sending him to another country called Arizona the way we did Ryan Sirk yesterday. So uh, we'll make a fuss over you when, uh, when, you, actually, uh, when you actually graduate. You know, when, when, you, when you graduate, not leave, just graduate. So we'll make a bigger fuss over you then. But uh, – uh, Interesting, uh, say the least, internship with these two young men and uh, challenged me a little bit. Taught me a few things as, as hopefully uh, I will grow as well from the experience. And that'll do it for this edition. So um, thank you, Jaden. We appreciate you and everything you did for us and uh, the, uh, the gray hairs that I have now. I want to thank you for those as well. So I appreciate that. That's going to do it for this edition. Tomorrow's it's the spring game back on Monday. We'll talk about the spring game because Coach Huff, Marshall's going to win. Yeah, but I'm going to point out Marshall lost too. I'm I'm not taking, you know, look, I've got to point it out. We'll talk about Marshall's loss in the spring game on uh, Monday. And we'll talk about Marshall's win in the spring game as well. That's coming up on Monday. Have a great weekend, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.